Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you all doing today? <laughs> that's good, that's good. So I'm going to talk to you guys about something that happened to me five months ago on October 6th at 9.30 p.m. I called home. My mother picked up. Mama, I need to tell you something. Yeah, what is it? I am not coming home. Oh, so you need us to come pick you up. No, Mama, I am not coming home. I have chosen to live on campus. What followed was a litany of accusations and recriminations. What are you doing? How could you do this? What did we do to you? And finally, where did we go wrong? What my mother could not know was that I had, and that I am still asking myself those same questions. My name is Sahla Khalid Bhatt. I was born in Pakistan, raised as a Muslim, and became an American. These three identities of myself prescribed codes of conduct, tacit rules of behavior, and frequently burdensome expectations. Never have these three elements of myself been more in conflict than now, with countless voices crying out, trying to decide what it means to be a good Muslim, or even a real American. What our country is struggling with today, I have been struggling with my entire life. How do I claim and honor the diverse influences of my cultures and decide who I am? Besides, as a Pakistani girl, I was expected to go to school to earn a degree. However, I was never supposed to use that degree. Rather, I was to marry the man of my parents' dreams, preferably one they have chosen have children, and spend the rest of my life raising a family and keeping a home. I was never supposed to use my degree, build a career, or have a personal life outside of my home. While I do respect the merit of these responsibilities, I cannot accept a culture that believes this is the only suitable life for a woman. Besides, these limitations, they do not have their roots in Islam. In Islam, women have the right to marry a spouse of their choice, so as long as he is a just and righteous man who upholds his religious obligations. Ironically enough, Pakistan itself was built on religious freedom, that freedom to practice religion without persecution from any other groups. Nowadays, many parts of the country uses Islam as a way to justify their own heinous acts. Unfortunately, Pakistan is not the only country to do so. Again, I cannot accept a culture that manipulates the idea of Islam for their own oppression on women. Is there a way for me to claim my Pakistani heritage while refusing to accept their lifestyle for women? Of course, I am by birth a Pakistani, but I am by choice an American. And yet, America has expectations of me as well. Of course, I have the freedom of religion, right? but don't look too Muslim. Of course, I have the freedom to worship, but do you have to pray right now? And of course, America is a melting pot, but they just aren't like us. And I have often felt like the they and not like the us. Is there a way for me to claim my American life while silencing those who believe I may cause another 9-11? The constant in both the Pakistani and the American culture was the practice of Islam. However, that did not come easy either. <laughs> like in all religions, there are differences among believers. On one hand, I had my family who told, who told me how to dress, how to act, and how to speak. On the other hand, I had people who asked me, why do you oppress yourself? Take that hijab off, show the world how beautiful you really are. In short, I had Muslim brothers and sisters who told me, that I was either not properly covered or I was too devout. Is there a way for me to show my commitment to Islam that does not garner indignation from other Muslims? How could I possibly fulfill the expectations of each of these three elements in my life and be who I wanted to be? The weeks leading, the weeks leading up to that phone call to my mother, I struggled with the reality I wrestled with the reality that I was not enough. Not enough of a Pakistani, not enough an American, not enough of a Muslim. 
as I confronted my shortcomings, as I tried and tried again to fulfill those same expectations, I was convinced that I was not enough. But then, I began to hear those around me. They expect me to publish. They expect me to have a 4.0. They expect me to solve their problems. They expect me to pay my own tuition. They expect and they expect and they expect. Rarely did these conversations begin with, hey, do you know what I want? Rarely was anyone being asked, what do you want to do with your passion, your gift, or your faith? Rarely was anyone saying anything that meant, hey, I know what your expectations of me are, and I just don't want to meet them. In my case, no one ever asked me, Sela, what do you want as a Pakistani, as a Muslim, as an American? And how will you use your own expectations to form your wider world, your own career, and most importantly, yourself? I understand we all have and we all meet expectations others have of us, some reluctantly and others joyfully. But when those same expectations smother our individuality, silence our inner voice, or even erode our beliefs, it is our duty to question those expectations. And when I did, I didn't know who I was anymore. I didn't know what I expected of myself, and I didn't know what to do. So I gave it some thought, actually a lot of thought. And I realized that I expected myself to take back control of my life. And I expected myself to make decisions for and by myself. Deciding to leave my parents' home was the first, the first decision I ever made for and by myself because I had been pushed, I had been nudged to abide by the expectations of culture, religion, and gender. I was taught to honor others, I was taught to fit in, and I was taught to live within very narrow lanes of what was expected of me. So I knew right then and there, I had to free myself from the environment that had trapped me mentally and emotionally from being who I wanted to be. But I did not do it alone. I had a lot of help from friends who supported me in this decision, and I thank them for that. As for my parents, well, let's just say they're having a hard time adjusting to my decision. But I know by the will of God, they will come around. As I end my speech, I want to say a few things. It is time as human beings we learn to choose and make choices for ourselves, to thoughtfully choose through the expectations we wish to follow. And if you have never done so, it will feel like you don't know who you are. You will be so insecure about yourself. You will feel like a failure. I did. And yes, it does take a while to revive from all this. But what I learned was that I am strong enough, I am capable enough, I am resilient enough to get through this hardship today and forever. And I expect you will too. Thank you.